I don't find any humor. <laughs> There's actually this I, is like a double whammy. I had it on all day. I had it on all day. You can go back and look at the videos today. I've been wearing, this is what I put on this morning. Happy Leprechaun's Day. What's that day? What's the holiday I'm thinking about? Where St. Patrick's going? Day? St. Patty's Day. No, this is not a St. Patty's Day special. This is a Sanctuary Sunday here in the... <laughs> I don't, I, I'm at a loss of words. Listen, here's what's going to happen. Let me just tell you, let me just kind of pair, let everyone know my version of what happened. I'm over here for the last 15 minutes getting everything set up. Yes or no? Mm -hmm. You're in the bedroom. Mm -hmm. Now, you can say you've been wearing that all day, but you were not wearing that while you were out doing your chores. Yes, I was. Yay. Bottom line is I come over here and say, babe, it's time. It's 8 o'clock. We got to roll. And she runs out wearing the exact same color as I'm wearing, which I think is like some kind of a joke. It's not a joke. I literally had this on all day. Anyway, that's, you know, I'll, I, I, and then she has a cat in her hands, a little kitten. She has a little kitten in her hands, and I don't know what to say. I, uh, you could go, just go with the lie. Just go with it. You've really thrown me off my game. You don't catch me at <laughs> a loss of words too often. Right now, I'm at a loss. I don't have a, I don't even have a cap to tip. Everybody, say hi, stranger, because this is stranger. And stranger was the first baby to be captured. Now, there is a fabulous video footage that will debut tomorrow morning. And when I say fabulous, I mean like, it's like Grammy worthy. Like it is fantastic performance by yours truly right here, Lester Morrow. And it is, it's like, what? I don't know where you're going with this. I don't know why you're rubbing it in. You caught a kitten. But, and But you caught the third one. And it was the funniest moment. Like in the world, top, top three moments of our lives together. It was that, it's that great. And it is on video. And it will play tomorrow. And, and. He has been begging me not to play it. There's not. Listen, we had a really good thing going here. Um, I'm just going to quote uh, a really sweet lady who says, Jamie, just remember that men by nature, by our DNA code, we are hunter gatherers. We are like barbaric in how we go about providing and the things that we do. And if you don't go in there and. Here, hold the kitty so it makes you feel better. Well, this is going to make me look real good now. <laughs> Hi, sweetie. Yeah, so now I understand why every time you go to the vet, all them poor vet techs and the veterinarians all have their hands all scratched and cut up. Megan. You can't see it very well, but I'm slightly injured. You go over there to see Megan and her hands are always scratched up. And I was like, man, what's like all these people doing? Like, they live a rough life. No, they live with cats. They deal with kittens, and um, this is actually good compared to. This is where like we night and day been. difference. Like this is exhaustion. Is really what it is. This is exhaustion. I don't really trust that one yet. <laughs> oh no, the one um, that can't be trusted see? is actually in the other room. I'm gonna swap it out and go get another to hold and and show off who's who. But. Uh, I'm telling you, like, I, I, Lester's like, don't play it. Just show the kittens on the live, and it'll be fine. Just tell everybody we got them. Nobody has to know how. Oh, y'all need to know how. Y'all need to know. After this week-long, two-week-long, actually, fiasco of kittens, there's no way I'm going to leave y'all in the dark about how this went down because it was magical, just magic. I think that I had some really good ideas, just I didn't have the right tools and uh, you don't you need the right tools what i didn't have the right tools you grab you hold on keep talking i'm gonna go swap cats out. i just want to say how blessed we are um to 
have caught the kittens and gotten them out of the wall from behind the wall. Like Jamie said, it was a two week ordeal of having them up in the loft. And then they found their way down behind the walls where they would have died. Had we not found that access point behind the tub um, and they, they found the way to it. And then even then it was just to get them to come out was something. Here's number two. This is Fritz and Fritz and their names are just whatever. Fritz was out on the Fritz the whole time. As you can see, Fritz is not as subdued as my little stranger is. Stranger is actually the kitten that was the one we found originally at the bottom of the steps. And so I feel like Stranger had a little bit more like will maybe like fight in him. Her. I still I haven't even looked to see if they're male or female yet. I'm not holding them. Not without welding gloves. <laughs> I mean, no, but bit this, this is the one that bit Lester. This is the one that really, this is the one. Now it's gotten better, as you can see, but there's still, th this one is still a little bit more skittish than the rest. Uh, somebody says Fritz bit Lester. Fritz almost took off Lester's finger top. Like, there was a lot of blood. <laughs> And in the video, that poor cat had blood all in his mouth. That was my blood. He would, he bit my finger, and it was all over his mouth, all over my hand. Uh, Sissy says, Lester, I think you just overthought it. Sissy, with all due respect, I'm a hunter-gatherer, all right? I'm a barbarian, well, and we I just wanted to snatch that. I wanted to snatch him out of the wall and put him into a crate and – well, yeah, what he really I thought that he could, what he really thought he could do. Well, they got the better of me. They got the better of me. <laughs> what? So I am man, but them little kittens are. We'd be sleeping at night or wake up in the morning, and they're like doo -doo 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 -doo, all over the floor underneath our bed. So Lester thought he could just let his arm hang down on the side and just you know snatch one up with his hands. Not gonna happen. So that's where all of the other brilliant ideas stemmed from. Is like if he's just present and just blocks the entrance then he can go from there and all i can tell you is there's only five holes to patch from screws and the cover is back on the wall and <clears throat> yeah that's that's go success. grab go grab number three you, you didn't even get to hold him him or I don't know. That's I'll it. That's all you got. Scratch his ears. How about that's all you ears. got for this baby? All right, he's a cutie. You have to admit this one's really pretty. Like it's silver. Um. Everybody say hi, Fritz. Hi, Fritz. You beautiful baby. Yeah. After I drilled the holes in the wall to set up my fishing net a contraption, uh, that's when Jamie drew the line. Um, and then she said she'll do it her way. And then she did it her way and her way ended up working this time. Her way doesn't always work. Y'all should know that her way worked this time, but her way doesn't always work. So I just want to make sure that I put that out there. And, um, cats are not really my thing. I've, I've more of a dog kind of a guy and cats are cute and they're, but they got sharp teeth and sharp claws, and they don't have to be very old to have all these of those These guys tools. don't even weigh a pound. They are very tiny and young. And for the fact that two weeks ago is whenever we noticed them, they were they were half this size two weeks ago, which is crazy to think yeah. about. Everybody, this is Freddy, like Freddy Cat. Looks a whole lot like Fritz, but is less, uh, is, is smaller, just smaller and a little bit more wiry-haired. I'm not a big cat lady. I love, I love Mr. Hank and I love our cats, but I'm not, uh, I'm more of a dog person like you are. Um, but we need cats to be able to, you know, deal with rodents and mice for a farm, of course. So that's important. And of course they're adorable because they're little tiny little babies. Um, but what's sad to me is that I had recognized that their mom there was a strange cat hanging around for a little bit and I knew all of our cats were fixed. And I just thought this is a cat that's just found her way here because, and I didn't even know it was a her, uh, she last was gray. Year, she was gray, striped gray. Um, last year 
uh, we were out walking in the pasture and that's when Ellie found a kitten, like just a random kitten. We don't see strange cats around here because of our dogs. So when I saw her, I was like, oh, they must know her. Like, okay. She was coming to grab some food. We do, you know, we do have cats that free feed our cats. <clears throat> so I just didn't even think anything of it. And then when the dog started barking that night, I thought it was a possum possibly at the steps because why would a cat make its way in here like that just didn't seem right and um lo and behold it was a little baby kitten and then to go upstairs and holy cow see more yeah all right so i'll just kind of like backtrack a little bit uh of what well, let me address the elephant in the room connie how could i not be a little bit jealous because she posted her video today uh on facebook of I'll just call it Jamie's phase one. Uh, the phases of Lester never worked, but Jamie's phase one, she posted today. And all I'm reading about, because I get notifications, <laughs> all I'm reading about are all these people who keep saying, Lester, I told you so. I told you so. I told you so. I told you so. How many I told you so can a man take? That Because that's also in our barbaric code. Not to be able to handle I told you so. And so in my code, the words that I keep reading all day long are, Lester, I told you so. And yeah, maybe you told me so. And so, fine. There, I said it. So it's not jealousy. It's just like, um, but hold on. I wanted to do, I wanted to win. I wanted to have something. After all of my work, I wanted to have something to show for it. And I have nothing to show for it besides <laughs> failure after failure after failure. You got this to show for it. This one's sweet. Freddy, go Freddy go get the sweet. other ones. The ouch, ouch. Go get the other one, the side by side, so we can show everyone how similar they look. Mm -hmm. You know they're like power and numbers, right? Fritz. Well, I will hold this one here against my heart. Maybe he can feel my heartbeat and know that I'm more scared than he is. <laughs> um, he does look terrified. So we are on two different devices right now. Y'all might see my eyes going up and down. It's not because I'm crazy. I'm not as crazy as I probably, I am crazy, guys. I am, y'all know I am crazy. I'm Just freaking not for nuts. This. Just not for this. But, uh, yeah, these two looks, I, and I'm not choking. My hand is just resting here so he doesn't bite me. Uh, but look how big, look how much bigger this one's head is than that one. Is he pawing? Look at him, like, uh, they're trying to hug. I He's, told you, he power wants, and He numbers. wants to hug him. Oh, they're hugging because they're so nervous. they like, who are them two cats with that <laughs> man and woman? They see themselves. So, <laughs> so mad. Fritz is so pissed. Why don't you give me the mean one for her? I didn't. You got the sweet one. You got this the is sweet a sweet one? one? Yes. Okay. You got Freddy. I really am holding him gently. It may look like I have my hand squeezed He's around him. He's got his him, head like, lean forward. But for listen, my, my fingers are not squeezed. <laughs> Everyone's going to think that I'm choking this poor cat. I'm not. My hand. He's just literally resting on my palm uh, and leaning against my hand. Okay. So, uh oh, boy, oh, oh, don't you, don't you, don't you, don't you do that. There you go. You sweet, sweet, sweet. Mm -hmm. yes. So we will um, play Jamie's video tomorrow on her channel that shows the capture. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, hey, hey, uh oh, Jamie, I think that goes in here once down. Well, you can't put it down. I know. I That's can't. the rule. <laughs> like So um, but anyone? No, yeah. I wanted to say, though, that had had you not spent the time in there and given them the comfort of us, us together, it wouldn't have been as easy for me to just sit down and for them to come out and eat. Like we both had a hand in this. I didn't want to give you credit in the video, but I will give you so credit now. So what you're now. saying is they thought they had us whooped. They, they yeah. said, these guys are suckers. Yeah, they're like, these guys aren't going to do anything. Well, ain't what nothing are they, gonna they can do? do. And, uh -oh. All right. So at that point, they realized, you're going to try to hold both of them? Yeah. At that point, they realize that these guys are not a threat to us. We yes. do what we want to do. We eating all their food. We're eating all their food because we tried everything. Yes. I say we. I tried tuna. I tried pieces of ham. I tried when I actual and canned saw canned food. A bowl of ham on the floor. <laughs> it I wasn't was like, a bowl. It was their bowl, but it only had a couple of hams. All little, I know is there's pieces. ham in there, and I was like, oh, he's he's really taking it to the extreme right now. <laughs> Even Mr. Hank walked up to that and was like. He ain't eating that. No. Um, no. Anyway, we, we are blessed because I did not want to have to worry about them cats, you know, these kittens behind the wall. And at some point, y'all, something bad could have happened. Um, talk about how, how we I got plenty to talk about, Jamie. She okay. wants me to talk about stuff. 
Like you can talk about, no. Um, so I will say that we're blessed that the kittens have now been captured. And so now we have to figure out what is the next step. So you guys know that we have seven barn cats. I call them barn cats. They, some live here in the shop, but most live out in the garage. And, uh, you know, if you don't know this, this is kind of a country thing, but country folks know that to have a barn cat, you have to feed them and they will, they will live where you feed them. And so we feed our barn cats out in the garage. We call it the garage. It's not the shop right here. The dogs live in the shop right here, but the um, barn cats live out in the garage and they protect our feed from mice. Right. And if you don't have mice, you won't have snakes. So yeah, we so we like we like a lot of barn cats. Uh, you all know them. Um, but the issue is we can't. So all, all of our barn cats are fixed, either spayed or neutered. And so when we saw this other cat show up, it was a gray cat. We've both seen it several times just around with our cats. Yeah. But we never thought anything about it other than, you know, a cat shows up. Because if you feed them out there in the barn, they're going to, other ones may show up. And then to find out that we had babies, well, that was a shocker. What were you going to say? What I was going to say is, though, like next steps for these kittens are we can't just like let them out in the barn. No, 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 no. No, they need vet until they get gentled down. They That's will what I'm need saying. Like right now, they're terrified. So they'll, they'll run. Yeah. And likely Inwormers. run back up to the attic and then can find the way back down in the wall. And then we're just back at square one. And there's no way for us to close off the attic completely. No, no, no. And so no, and this has well, to be like a, there's strategy that has to go into and this. And then something that you didn't say that you're probably scared to say, because we want people to love our dogs. But guys, I'm going to tell you right now that not all of our dogs are cat friendly. <laughs> that, that sounded so stupid. Not all of our rescues and our just our, our amazing dogs are not all cat friendly. I don't know why I giggled like that. I don't know I why you cat. did either. I was like, I don't know, Jamie, but they're not cat friendly. <laughs> What's wrong I with you? I don't know. Just talk. Just talk. Just talk. Yeah. So we have some chasers <laughs> and... Um, that it's a bad habit, but we're not going to be able to break it in this short amount of time in conjunction with taming down feral kittens. So we have to make decisions about what's next for the kittens. So I know for a fact, now I don't know at the timeline for a fact, but at some point we have to get flea treatments for sure. And We've done the at-home version of it, but that's not enough. That, yeah. That's not like D they need bigger. Dewormers for sure. And I would think, I mean, obviously you want to get vaccinations, but I don't know how old until they get their first round of vaccinations. And so we cannot keep them in a kennel for six weeks. I'm guessing they're probably two or three weeks, four weeks now. I think they're probably like six. I don't know. But isn't it crazy how we never knew they were upstairs? Never until the day that our dogs went crazy and cornered one. And so that makes me wonder. Did mama bring them here? That's what I don't know. Or did mama have them here? So I was wondering if she brought them and dropped one on the step. Like she brought, made the other two get upstairs and then dropped the other one on the steps. Like the dogs got her, got her, or something her. like that. Got at her, yeah. Because it's very unlikely that the dogs wouldn't have been going nuts with her being up there for weeks before that. I know that Buddy was upstairs, which caused the, the air duct mishap and things like that so and there's going to be people who are going to say that but but little, 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 buddy was only up there because he knew maybe, that there were cats or kittens up there maybe but i i don't have a camera that was set up there until we found the kittens um so i don't have the answers i saw the first kittens. vaccines at six weeks thank you sissy wait that's that's dr cochran's mama <laughs> sissy of course she knows that She's what probably she texting Dr. Cochran going, when do they need to go in? Can you get us an appointment too, Sissy? First of all, Miss <laughs> si no one sends Sissy a friend request. Miss Sissy, don't accept a bunch of friend requests because there are some great, great people. Some amazing people. What are you saying? She says, I consulted your vet. <laughs> oh, my gosh. She consulted our vet. Uh, Dr. Cochran uh, is our vet. Uh, she and Dr. Priestley, and they're amazing. And this is Dr. Cochran's mom, who I have personally invited to come visit, oh hang out boy. with us for a week. I want to meet you and hang out with you for a week. Uh, because from what I hear, she's more of a Longhorn Lester guy. 
or a kind of guy, kind of gal, then she is a suits the boots kind of gal. That's fine. That's fine. I'll, I'll hang out with Dr. Cochran and we'll like do I thing. say, everyone needs to find their happy place. So, Miss Sissy, thank you for choosing Longhorn Luster. That's your happy place. I'm thank kidding. you for boosting his ego. He needs it. I clearly. do. Look how I, I'm clearly a, look, he needs it. Look how uplifted I have been just from being able to say that. <laughs> so, thank you, Dr. Cochran's mama. I hope they call you, you mama. Do you think that she appreciates being like, like I was Xander's mom, you were Ellie's dad, right? Like in social settings. Like, do you think that you're like, there's this, you know, point in time where you're like, I'm Lester or I'm Jamie or, or like she wants to be sissy or is she cool with being Dr. Cochran's oh, mom? Oh, I get it. No, no. Here's what I think. I think as a parent, you feel honored to know that. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, no. I love sissy. Hold on a second. I can't wait. <laughs> she says it's the Argo, Lester. See, we're going to take that Argo <laughs> for a ride. We're going to take that Argo and go for a ride. You and me. It's going to be a lot of fun. But uh, And we're going to talk about your daughter because she gives me a hard time. Because you talk deserve about it. That. Yeah. So, mm. But what I was saying was um, don't accept a bunch of friend requests. No, no, no. Don't. Because I'll tell you all. And I'm going to tell you something that that, uh, that we got from Miss Janine over at the uh, our favorite restaurant here in town. And I, and it's sad it has to be this way. It, it is sad it has to be this way. But we made a video about Miss Janine and what an amazing person she is and how much she helps us and she service. And then she we found out about her personal story and her struggle and all of the things that she's been through in her life to have built her to the woman that she is today, an amazing, an amazing woman. And so for all of the kind people out there that enjoyed the video and messaged and commented, there's also been a couple of people who you might, you might see it as friendly, but we see it as kind of stalkerish when you, you can't call someone at work over and over and over and yeah. over and Miss Janine has had to deal with management now, giving her a hard time because this same person calls to talk to her at work at, at her work because we made the mistake of it of saying where she worked. Jamie and I are people, people, we're, we're people, people. We love to meet and shake hands and hug. And I try to, whenever we meet somebody new who knows us through the page, give them a little piece of a shout out on a video and whatnot. But guys, not everyone is like that. And you can't expect everyone to be that way. And so uh, Miss Janine got some nice things that were sent to her and mailed to her. And they all went to the restaurant where she works. But the person who calls her throughout the entire day, that's just, that's just, that's not very kind to put her under stress and pressure at her job. And that's what you've done. So I would just ask you, Miss Miss Cochran, um, and everyone else, don't don't do that. If we have someone come on who you might can, because you you can learn about people through the internet. You can find them on Facebook. You can find out where they work, but you can't really harass them, and that's kind of harassment. Right. So so for for Miss Cochran, what we're saying is that she shouldn't accept friend requests from people she doesn't know and things like that. We're not saying that she's the one doing this or anything like that. We're simply no, saying Dr. Cochran's mom's not doing it. No, but I wanted to clarify what you said though, of like of of or is she when we showcase people, it isn't necessarily an invitation for people to like connect with them to find a way to connect with us. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what you can't do. Connect with us through social media and through our email. And a lot of y'all have learned about the WhatsApp app that I use. And so I communicate on a pretty regular basis with, with almost everybody that I can get to. And we are people, people, and we will love to communicate with you. And if we see you out and about, by all means, we'll say hi and Jamie will hug on you and I'll shake a hand. And I'm going to always quiz everybody. I quiz everybody. I'm the teacher in me has to quiz everybody. In fact, you did it yesterday. at Tractor I did. Supply. I did. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I did do that yesterday to a lady at Tractor Supply, which was fun. But uh, no, just realize that. Um, but they are they are friends of ours and they're guests of I don't want to say guests of our show, but they are. But that doesn't mean that 
you should go out and contact them. Someone, actually many people are saying how creepy that is. And you don't want to be that creepy person, guys. You don't want to be that creepy person. So just know that it's nice to make their acquaintance through here. And uh, you can comment through here because I bet you they would probably read comments the same way we all do. Yeah. But don't bother them at work. And then we're going to have to be, be more careful yeah, about that's talking what about Lester and I learned a lesson there, really, of ensure that, that we communicate to those watching as well of, you know, we, we, we can't do this if this is the outcome every single time and where it puts people in fear and they're, you know, watching when they walk to their car, when the restaurant closes and things like that, like that's, that's not fair. And yeah. And yeah. And it's scary. Miss Janine is, is a woman who has to close sometimes and it's not, no, it's not. And then uh, I think the scariest story she told us, um, we went, we went there recently. Uh, y'all know that we eat there once a week. And, uh, she said that this particular individual, I'm not going to say any names, um, this kind of spooky, but, um, Miss Janine got to work at her time to get there. And right when she walked in, the phone rang and it was for her and it scared her y'all. It scared her. She, and it would scare anybody. It would scare Jamie. It would scare me because that makes you think that someone is in the parking lot watching you and knows your schedule and knows your, and now they know your schedule and what you drive. And when you, and so I just, I don't want to be mean to anybody. I'm not trying to be mean to you all, but uh, let's just remember that these are real people. And, and the same way we ask for privacy and respect, we ask for that for the people that we showcase and talk to and bring on. And that includes our vets. That includes our farriers. That includes, that includes anybody. We it's the say an extension of of what we bring in social media, in my opinion, is through social media, and that's the way it should that should remain that way. Yeah. Uh, sometimes I um, feel like I don't know my YouTube. I'm just gonna say my audience in, instead of family as much as I know my Facebook audience family. And that's because on YouTube, there's no way to click on them and see who they are on YouTube. You can't, I mean, you click yeah. it and anybody can have any name. You don't have to give all of your bio. You don't. And so, but if I click on any name on Facebook, I can see all of your friends. I can see all of your pictures. I can see anything that you never put on private, your hometown, your school, where you went to school. And so things that people say, I can see your, your birthday. birthday. And so a lot of things Facebook by default will have on public. And so Facebook has always been about having a community. And so people have kind of used it for a negative. I mean, the, 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 the it all came to a head the day that a lady burnt our dumpster. <laughs> I still talk about that. It's been several years ago over at I'm a survivor and uh, she was passing by daily and then she would tell us that uh, she's passing by and then she began to tell Jamie she created that she and I had this thing going. She had created an entire fantasy about our, our, about our history that she and I had a history. You you talk about it because it's not out of she my mind. She sent mouth. me a message because Lester told me to pick up some steaks and come on by on Friday. True, that's not true. And that we would grill out and just all hang out. And I was like, uh, no, he didn't. No, no. And then how how they had a previous relationship and how she gave them to. That the, how she gave him to me. She, yeah, she gave me to Jamie. She, she she let Lester go so he could be with me. And I'm like, who is this woman? Like, and I'm like, Jamie, I swear I've never met her in my life. I don't know who this person is. And then Jamie began to get very mean letters that she was writing from her home in some other state. I don't want to say the state. Pencil. Oh, you're gonna, oh yeah. She wrote it in pencil, which to me is like that's when it's that's some serious shit. Like you, if you're taking the time to write in pencil, you didn't type it up. You didn't just grab an ink pen. You found a pencil, you sharpened it, and you wrote it in pencil. And then you took the time to physically mail it, and you put your return address on it in your threat yeah, as well. Yeah, that was the that was when. Um, so we we handled it the right way. We handled it with the we authorities. Did. 
And it was very soon discovered that this person is ill. I'm not making light of no. anything, but they are ill. And so I would just ask that and today, Dr. Cochran, I don't even know why I called Dr. Cochran's mom out, but just don't accept friends requests. If you don't know them, this is for this is good advice for everybody on there. It really is. And you know what I've seen all the time? Everyone knows this, that every time you go to, especially on Facebook, more than YouTube, I believe, that this same spammer or spammer hacker, whatever you want to call them. It's always a person, a man who has an attractive profile when she's stolen from a real person and he creates his own fake profile. And then he's so dumb to go on there and say, I really like the things that you say. You always share such amazing Inspiring information. Things. And he's like, will you send me a friend? Request? Would you send me a friend request? And I'm like, Jamie, I feel bad for anyone gullible enough to fall for that and then uh J jamie um jamie says that whenever i use the word gullible and i call people gullible that you all get mad at me <laughs> so i don't want to I'm, I'm trying to, to remove that word from my vocabulary if it truly is making people angry that i'm using that word a lot well, here's the because no one wants to like be called out for I, I i get it i, I, would I don't want out. to either like what do you mean it's not true like it's one of those like revelation things the last thing you want is for someone to to call that out and about you um so yeah i don't i don't think I, see i'm kind of torn i feel like we on one hand we have an obligation to share if we know something or we see something deceitful or wrong. Just let's just say straight up wrong. I, you can, I don't want to say immoral, but just if something wrong is happening and we see that people, especially our people, are falling for it. I kind of think that we have an obligation and a responsibility to call it out. I just wish that y'all would call it out for each other uh, more. And that's not just the I people that are. I think that's important. Yeah. If you see it in the comments and somebody else and be like, you know, just report it and hit, you can say it's spam, you know, let that person know they're a spammer because somebody may not be as experienced with the internet as you are. Um, <clears throat> can I tell this Brianne story? Uh, yeah, but like, but just remember, it's not just people who are spammers. It's other video creators. It could be anybody Think about what you're doing and what they're asking of you. Think about what you're doing, and what they're asking of you. So, Brianne, of course, I spent a lot of time with Brianne in the car this last week. And we're talking about social media and everything. And, and uh, we're talking about some of the comments that come through and some of those spammers and how creative that they're getting. Because some of the spammers will even say, I love animals as much as the next person. And we're like, dang, that's really like they're getting like an AI or something to know what type of video they're watching. Yeah, it's AI. And Brienne, <laughs> Brienne one ups us all and goes, do you all have your messenger turned on? And I said, I said, I do, but I don't. I don't have the time to check them all the time. And for I'm a survivor, we don't have messages turned on anymore because there was so much spam. She goes, let me tell you about my spam. Brianne is getting the most vulgar messages. Hold on. But they're also holding farm animals. <laughs> and they're, they're showing their private parts. Yeah. In so, videos while they're holding a chicken so or I'm, a goat. We don't have to talk about any specific ethnic group, but it's always a foreigner. I'll just say a foreigner. <laughs> who's in the nude, who's holding a chicken or holding a goat or holding a And then they're kitten. asking for a job. And, you know, and all I can think about is like, who said this was how you do this? Like, where does this, what part of the world does this work? And what on earth is happening? Hello, dear. Yes. Yeah. And what on earth, like, when did this trend start? I've never been more thankful that I we don't have Messenger anymore on Facebook. You know, it was neat to communicate with people for a long time, but the spam got so out of control that you would get a thousand messages a day and 800 of them would be spam. And if you open them, you put your, your page at risk. So we just took it away. So now things have changed in the Facebook world since that point in time. And, you know, as the family's developed uh, doing things like that, Brienne does respond to messages and does go through that with her page. And when she was showing Stephanie and I these things, I was mortified. Like, 
how can Facebook not control that? Because that is just, it was disgusting and awful. And at the same time, like, what if your kid found that? Like, it's just all the questions. It was just yeah, awful. So kids the, do use our phones. And the they, internet is that. a terrible place. That's just what I'm going to say is it's a terrible place. Just be safe and cautious and thankful that you weren't getting the messages that Brianne is getting. I did tease her a little bit and ask like, you know, that they, they're like things listen to you and like show up on your page you know, after what you've been saying, like, what does your Google search look like? And she's like, don't even, no, no, it didn't happen. <laughs> I don't even want to think about what Brian might be searching <laughs> to bring up nude foreigners holding chickens. <laughs> but uh, it's fun to laugh at. But when, if you ever get caught in yourself in a scam or a spam yes. web, it's not easy to, get, easy to get out of. And Jamie can tell you, I don't need to talk a whole lot, but guess who got caught up in that? Lester, for as smart as I think I am and as smart as I thought I was, I also fell for a scam uh, a few years back. And I don't want to tell that story right now. I don't want to waste all of our time telling that story. But I always thought myself to be pretty smart. You know, I'm a pretty smart guy. I taught school for all these years and, you know, and this and that. And if they didn't have such an elaborate plan to trick me and sucker me in to giving out my information, account information, and it took, it, it was a mess. It was a mess. And I would say if you're, especially, so what they do is they target people who they feel like are more vulnerable. And so I know that our audience, mostly 45 and older, and so, unfortunately, with the way technology changes, we are a very vulnerable audience and we are vulnerable ourselves. And so they come onto our page and they say, hey, you won something. Listen, they take my picture. They take my name. Longhorn Lester's, you won. Send me this and this and this yeah. and you're going to get a prize. Guys, that's not true. That's not us. Yeah, we don't, we don't do that. We don't do giveaways or prizes or contests or anything like that. Like, I would just say in general, if you don't ever believe that, no. ever. No, it's hard. And it's, you know, I feel bad because I know that people have given money and, and have, have bleeding hearts and want to help. And, and it goes all the way from GoFundMes to <sighs> to asking you know people asking for help people asking i'm gonna turn for... this off real fast it's, it's making a chugging noise and they're gonna think it's my stomach it's just hard and and i i always think like you work really hard for your money you know we work really hard for our money as well and the last thing that you want is to be taken advantage of and i think that that just goes you know it's just a caution to throw out there of like just just you know just be safe and really look into what you're doing and, and just be, be careful and don't, don't trust so easily on the internet. Yeah. Uh, this is what I, whenever I find myself in a position to pay a blessing forward, a financial blessing. And if someone says, you know, I'm fine. Thank you. I don't need it. I'm like, then you know what, why don't you pay it forward? Let me, let me bless you. And then you pay it forward by buying the drink for the lady behind you at Starbucks or when you go to McDonald's, tell the young lady or the young man to keep the change. And you don't know. I don't know if you know, but there was a time in our lives where if we ran across a five dollar bill that had somehow got lost and are stuck in our pocket, went to the wash. That was an amazing day. I was on grace. my knees thinking, God. Because a $5 bill or be it a couple of quarters or whatever it may have been could have been the difference in being able to afford my son a pack of French fries on the way home from school or, well, or, or something. I, for me, it was like being able to put gas in my car to be able to get to work. And I, that wasn't too <clears> long ago. And I know that the, that's real in real life for for many people. And so Lester and I believe that in Times where we are able to pay a blessing forward, we do. And that might be money. That might be other things. But we're we're cautious, I guess, is the best way to describe it. Yeah. And I just think that, I mean, it goes with just as a general guideline. If there's anybody on the Internet, they already have access to make their own money. They have access to earn money. Don't give them yours. Make them earn it the way video creators have to earn it. 
How do we earn it? By ads, by you watching the videos. And if we can't entertain you, if we're no longer entertaining and you find that you're bored, then go find your happy place. And that's on us. That's on us. So stop giving your money and don't fall for those GoFundMes. Should we How stop? did we get here? How did we even get here? We started talking about kittens Dr. in the Cochran's attic. Dr. Cochran's mom is here. And she I, probably left. She's like, boy, I started the pop. I just showed up tonight. No, I just worry about because I feel so bad for Miss Janine and what she's had to go through. And that reminded me that there's probably hundreds, maybe thousands of people who have also been victims of spammers and scammers. And so the general guideline is keep your money, keep your information to yourself. You know, Lex, uh, my my son, Lex, um, he we gave him a I forgot the name of it. We're not going to talk about the name of it. It doesn't matter. But he has his very own little debit card. And so we put a different uh, amount of money on his debit card that he can spend however he wants to. That's his Quote, that quote, that's his money. He's earned it by doing his chores and by doing his work, you know, around the house and stuff. And so that's his allowance. And so he can use it the way he wants to. But what we learned real fast is that Lex was not very smart. He wasn't ready. He wasn't ready. But it was a good lesson because 12 years old and he wasn't ready because he went off and spent all of his allotment in a couple of days time. And, and then he had to wait 28 more days until he got, you know, paid again. Cause that's how we, that's like, that's a, yeah. that's a good time to be, you know, in this lesson period of like, you have this money, you can make it last or you can, you can do this, but it's be a real long month in between there. So it was his, it's, he just got his second allowance uh, two days ago and he's, he's holding on to it a little bit more this time. Yeah. Just we don't want you guys to fall victim to anybody who's taking your money, especially if they have the ability to make money themselves. So just general rule of thumb. You heard it from Lester. And so. Somebody says there's a Dr. Pepper Museum in Waco. A Dr. I Pepper wanna go Museum to Waco in Waco. Because I just learned about something called the silos. Did you know about the silos? Um, I mean, I know what a silo is. It's a nuclear no, mm -mm, no. Okay. Uh, so the silos is like a store from the, you know, Chip and Joanna Gaines. Uh, no, you got nothing? HGTV? Okay. Anyway, no. uh, I want to go to Waco selfishly on a girl's trip. But now that I see there's a Dr. Pepper museum there, I might, it might be a you and me trip. You want to go to Waco? Mm. So Dr. Pepper ice cream. We've tried that. Dr. Pepper um cotton candy you've had me try that i've had the jelly beans we had the jelly beans dr pepper jelly beans so let me ask you this what is it about dr pepper and the sudden popularity of it dr pepper's been around for a long time you know i got a photo from a sweet lady in south africa who showed me that she's found dr pepper and she has a little can of Dr. Pepper that she's drinking Aww. on the beach in South Africa. That's so cool. And she'd never really heard of Dr. Pepper until watching our videos. And she knows how much I like it. And, uh, but no, it's crazy how there's like this sudden discovery of Dr. Pepper and Dr. Pepper products. But you know what? I'll be happy to go with you on a trip. Isn't there, some, isn't involves... there something else in Waco, like some history stuff too? Didn't something happen in Waco? Well, I mean, in, in history, you had something horrible happening in Waco with the David Koresh oh. and the the people's, not people's temple, but uh, his his cult. And they, oh. yeah, and the ATF agents. And there was something not the that, history I was thinking. Happened no, there, there's so horrible never mind. history in Waco oh, no. of a, a cult. I thought that it was like a battleground of some sort, but. No, that was a battleground, well, you but know not one I mean. that we're proud of. Not it's not a, it's not a. Pretty I meant thing. one that you would be interested in because you no. love history so much. But no. yes, let's go on a Waco road trip. Sorry, ladies, you got bumped down the line. Uh, we you now know, we've been to Waco. That's where we picked up our our female ostriches from. Yeah, so but we, we didn't know, go we, to do any of that stuff there. We no, we're we just took a trip and dragging a trailer along behind us. Yes, the Branch Davidians were the cult group in Waco. Thank you. And, um, 
I said People's Temple. That would have been the Jim Jones folks, I believe. I don't remember all that. But, uh, boy, some scary, scary stuff happened in Waco. As a matter of fact, all of those, the Netflix is now showing all of that. Hmm. So it's 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 so, so such a sad thing. Well, but just, once again, how can people be deceived? How can grown men and grown women who have children, who are grandparents, be deceived? by someone that seems and looks so innocent and preaches and oh my gosh it's so sad to me and then you saw where that ended every you know ended for so many people Woo, anyway bad stuff. uh okay so besides that history i want to go to waco <laughs> We'll skip yes. that part of Waco. Uh, I want to go see the silos, and now I want to go see the Dr. Pepper Museum, and that'll be a fun little day trip. It's only like, what, three hours from here? Waco, yeah, three hours. Yeah, that's a day trip. that We can go there and back, right? Yep. That there sounds fun. Sounds good. Okay. Well, I guess I'm going to start planning a Waco day trip then in this million-degree heat that wave that we're going to have for the next nine weeks. Uh, we're expecting over 100 degrees real temp every day for the next 10 days and our heat index is between 117 and 120. So Lester and I and Megan and Ellie are going to be doing triple water days and watering stations and having fans and just doing everything possible to keep all of the animals cool. Um, you have some really neat content that you've caught happening in the Bigs pasture this weekend coming up, right? Yeah, it's going to, you know, some projects, uh, video making projects require a lot of work, a lot of editing. Um, and so the kitten videos, believe it or not, as cute and as fun as those were, they were a lot of work. Uh, when you start, you know, kind of chopping things up and then putting music to it and trying to fit the music to the mood, those are a lot of work. But no, we got some some cute videos. We're trying to um, mix some things up a little bit. We're trying to mix some things up a little bit and uh, not in a bad way. It's going to affect everybody for the better, but it's uh, going to require a little bit more work on our part. And, you know, we say this all the time, uh, but it's true that there's 50 million people just waiting to take our spot. You do know that. I do. And so as video creators, you know, of course, Jamie still works full time. I don't. I've made this my profession. So you do have to make sure that you're on top of your game and that as times change and people do evolve, you do have to roll and you have to evolve with it. And you got to find, keep looking for new and creative ways to make your product one that people want to be a part of. And so it is, yeah, it's a, it's a, some new things that are coming. I'm going to say it's a new video format i think is the easier way that i'm trying to put it no i know you're talking about one particular video yeah i was really just talking about an, a couple of events well, that I, I just plugged that i'm gonna have to start slowly evolving into a new video format and seeing how people do with it and uh let's so just try a new style hey sometimes you got to mix it up a little bit jamie it's gonna be fine it's gonna be fine yeah so you have that going on this week um, what else is happening this week? Lex is here. Well, Lex is at G's tonight. Lex is here with us, uh, for the summer now. Um, my niece and her mom will be here on the fifth. So we have some, some planning to do around that. I have a, a thing that I'm working on building, which I'm really excited about. We are going to have a farm Olympics this this summer and we'll do some, a kid version and an adult version. The adults don't know that yet. This is my first announcement of that. So that's going to be super awesome. Um, but we're working on those projects, uh, big greenhouse stuff is happening and will be happening this week. So that's exciting. Lester's got some tractor stuff to do tomorrow and the next day for me that he also doesn't know all about yet. And, um, <sighs> it's, it's going to be a great week. Yeah, my only request is that you put me to work after a certain hour or before yes. a certain hour, because in the middle of the day, you don't want to do anything. And I don't know how folks are able to get out and do things midday, but uh, the animals don't want to be doing anything. They, no, they're they, very much in the shade or, or you know, in being cooled off in that routine that we've created. Um, so that'll be 
you know, it's going to be, it's going to be a busy week because of the heat. That's for sure. But also trying to time things out projects like today, we started projects at five 30 um, because it was just too hot to do during the day. Um, and the animals don't want to do anything basically from 10 to five 30. Really. That's about their, you know, their break time. What are you thinking? What did I, I forget? I, I'm thinking more like six 30. So I hope that this five thirty thing is so today. Is true. I start at five thirty. We, we and so I did it too because t we had the live at eight. Mm -hmm. But uh, normally, I will say this: I there have been days where I said I've waited till darn near seven o'clock. Yeah. And even at seven o'clock, you walk outside, you can see the sun starting to fall behind the trees over here. Yet the sweat just immediately just begins to pour out of you, and so you know you're going to be a wreck within five minutes. And so that's at seven o'clock in the afternoon. Well, it gets but, a little bit scary right now because the nighttime temperatures don't drop below 80. Animals, specifically animals that stay out in the heat, really need that that time at night to cool down so that their their bodies can regulate itself. When it doesn't drop below 80, it gets to be a little bit dangerous. Remember, if you know, if, or if you remember last year about the all drought, the cows yeah. that passed oh, yeah. away. Um, you know, that had a lot to do with the drought, had a lot to do with the nutrition, that type of thing. Now we're not in an extreme drought right now, but we could definitely use some rain. Um, and, and the heat is, is not great. It's just, it's not great. And I know it's Texas and it sounds weird to complain about the heat, but when you don't get a break for that amount of time, um, you just start to be concerned for your animals and take precautions to, to take care of them. Yeah. Even though we talk about it i still remind you all the time you haven't felt anything yet I know. uh because july and then august and august is the one that's going to be the woo yeah. i am not looking forward to august but uh, no jamie was talking about us taking a trip and i thought to myself i'm sitting here trying to be polite like oh yeah i'll go i'll go and we in my mind, I'm thinking, wait, there ain't no way I can leave anytime. We there can't go no till October. I didn't mean we were going this week. I <laughs> yeah. mean, we can't go till October. So we uh, were very blessed that Ellie and Megan are full time at I'm a Survivor and doing a darn good job, y'all. They're doing such a darn good job. Um, There's a dog at the door. Yeah, they're wanting to come in. But uh, we we don't have anyone over here. It's just Jamie and I, and, and we're fine. We yeah. you know we make trips over to I'm a Survivor throughout the week, three or four, five times a week. Uh, we still have our jobs that we don't want to give up yet that we're doing over there. Of course, I have my cows over there that uh, I love spending time with, and there are projects to be done over there that I know I have to at some point jump on with some fencing and stuff. And I'm not looking forward to it. I really do want to see if I can wait and hold out until the fall. So, but uh, no, ain't no one looking forward to anything to do during the heat. And, and but we have to be present. We have to yeah. be present because it wouldn't take long uh, yeah. for, you know. Yeah. They, they, we, we get into a routine at this time where, it's morning waters and spray down. Then it's a midday waters and spray down. Afternoon waters and spray down. And then really being able to turn fans and sprinklers on at strategic times because we have a well. And the well feeds every water source here besides the pond, obviously. But everybody's water. So we have to time it. You can't just go turn on everything at one time and just be like, well, see you later, deuces. Because yeah. you have to be considerate of the well getting too hot and running running too much as well. Yeah. Yeah, that's something that we've had to really preach to Ellie and Megan because this is the first time that they've both uh, lived on well water. Exclusively on well water. Yeah, yeah, not having city water where, you know, it's just, it feels like it's just always there. But well water is dependent on that well. Right. And uh, you got to make sure that well doesn't overheat and doesn't, you know, run itself dry. And so it's, it's, it's tough. Yeah, electrolytes but, uh, to the animals and just ensuring that, you know, uh, they have extra minerals and things to support them during this time. Like it's a, it's, I would even say that we've learned so much over the past couple of years throughout, you know, the time of caring for all these animals of, of what to do early on to prevent some of the things that we've sadly yeah. gone through. Well, one thing that we're doing that I think is really neat are our big birds. Uh, you know, we have our males over here in their pasture and their, um, spot over here with the goats and then we let our females stay in the big pasture but at around two o'clock every day they all begin to congregate around our water sprinkler 
And so I go out here to the males first and I turn on their sprinklers and they all plop down and they, they have a, an eyelid, not, you know, they have multiple they have eyelids. Yeah. So they close one of their eyelids. So the water didn't get in their eyes and they sit there. And I guess that eyelid that they close is still transparent. They can see through it. So, they, so they're watching me with their eyes closed to see what I'm doing. And so they sit there in that water sprinkler for 30 minutes. And that's what I run it for 30 minutes. And then I'll turn it off. They get so mad. And then I'll walk over and do it for the females in the other pasture for 30 minutes. And they do the same darn thing. Just lay there. They're all waiting for it. They want that 30 minute break. And then even when you turn the water off, the ground around them is still cool. Mm -hmm. So it gives them several hours of cool, you know, through the heat of the day. Yeah. But it is constant. Y'all, it's constant work. Don't let anyone fool you and think that it's not. Um, but you look for any break you can. Uh, rain is always welcome because that's going to always cool things off a few degrees. And like Jamie said, putting them sprinklers out there and getting the animals to cool down during the heat of the day, giving them a routine keeping our horses and the dogs brushed is big. Yeah. Brushing them out, spraying them down, having, we have kitty pools out for the dogs to cool off in. And of course, um, you know, with the horses, spraying them down, keeping the flies off of them. Like it's, it's a routine, but it's also a, it's, it's rhythmic and, and requires a lot of time. There's a couple of questions that I'm going to address uh, from you to uh, Facebook real fast. So Christmas, all of her babies have been adopted out. Um, I would say that Holly Darlene, which is the one that went to Miss Norma, is the really the only one who we have constant updates on. Uh, Miss Norma started her very own Instagram for Holly Darlene. And so we see her post almost daily. Of course, we see the dog or the pup that we sent to Jake and Lissa, Moose, uh, when we go over yes. and he's doing great, but we don't, I can't say that we see everything going on in the life no. of the other dogs, but on occasion, those folks do send us a picture that, they, that they've taken a cute moment, a little oh, video I clip. I got to show you something that came okay. today. Keep talking. And then uh, another question was about Tilly and Sissy. Yes. I, I'm certain that Tilly and Sissy are both pregnant and they, those are our goats over at I'm a survivor. And they will at some point um, have 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 kids, but um, I'm also pretty certain that the father of those goats is going to be Brienne's goat, who they call Lefty. I don't know why they call him Lefty, but um, we all thought he was way too young. I mean, I'm going to say this; it's going to sound a little bit vulgar, but it's animal and it's farm related. But his 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 man parts, his no nos hadn't dropped um, when we first brought Lefty over. You know what that means? What I mean by that? They hadn't dropped. And so all, so normally until an animal's man parts drop, <laughs> you don't, uh, you don't really think of them as a, as ready to, you know, to be a, a daddy yet. And so Lefty, we didn't have any problems with him hanging out with all of our goats through the, um, through last summer because he was at that point, he was still very young. He was a tiny little guy. If you go back to the videos, he's a little bitty goat. A yeah, little, it didn't little... make sense, but. Yeah, but now all of a sudden, all of our females look to be like very bred and like about to burst um, with uh, milk in their teats and everything, which tells me that Lefty must have been more manly, manly than what we thought he was. And so I joke and give Bree a hard time saying that you're going to be paying child support. I hope you realize that. But in reality, we 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 have always known that the goats here at Longhorn Lesters have plenty. The, it, this is the land of plenty as far as goat foraging goes. And I'm not I'm not asking for this, but we could run 50 goats here and still have more foraging. Why are you making that face for? <laughs> I'm not asking for 50 goats. Right now we have nine. Uh, we're going to have a few babies born. I, if I didn't have my phone in my hand to show this picture, I would be pinching your leg and pulling <laughs> the hair on your leg right now. Listen to me. I'm just going to say this. We could run 50 goats here and would not have and would not be worried about them running out of foraging. We're not going to get 50 goats. We don't need 50 goats. OK, no one needs 50 goats. But listen, I don't feed the goats. I don't have to feed them. I give them snacks and I may toss over a little bit of green hay. But I told Jamie 
and I, this is true. I don't think that we fed three bags of grain the entire winter because the goats are not hungry. There, there was so much green stuff growing throughout the winter do not ever say 50 shut your pie hole lester thank you thank <laughs> my you pie hole. shut my pie thank hole. you michelle michelle <laughs> uh that's funny and let them all bowl <laughs> Woo. okay it was very serious yeah you want to anyway, show something i, I want to show i got a picture uh from miss kathy okay uh, of billy bob an update of billy oh bob oh my gosh so look uh, can you see that hello a second there. he's wearing sunglasses he literally is wearing shades he is hippie little shades on there and it, she says, Billy Bob says it's okay to be extra. I'm telling you, I, number one, I miss Billy Bob, but there's no way on earth that he would feel comfortable with the pack that we have today. And there, But there is no better human to be caring for him so, than Miss Kathy herself. You want to know how I kind of relate Miss Kathy to Longhorn Lester's? And I and I told the lady that we met at Treasure Supply the same thing. She was talking about how beautiful the property is. And I said, I'm going to tell you something, and I'm kind of embarrassed about this, but there were two or three properties that Jamie and I were very serious about. And before we, before we bought Longhorn Lester's, we were very, very serious. I mean, serious enough to have an inspection, uh, to do all of the things that you have to do to start that buying process. And would you believe that something kept happening all three times? Mm -hmm. Something fell through. Either the inspection was no good or the appraisal came back. They were asking way more than it was worth. Or on one case, the owner backed out. And then if you remember one case, their, their barn was haunted. Okay. That's not why. That is why I would have no that it you that barn had demons in it. You don't even make that face, Jamie. That's we not went, why we officially backed out. Well, there was a lot of development. In the I'm area. like there was yeah, there were other reasons, but still, there it, it, it was not in our control. But it, listen, but what I'm what I was getting to is that it's weird the way sometimes things work out because had that very first offer. And inspection and all that went through, we would have never heard of this place that we all, you know, are so happy with now in Longhorn Lester's. Our animals would be living somewhere else. And it might have been a great place, but looking back and then comparing videos and remembering all the, I think that we shared most of the process with everybody as far as the other properties. And this is the one that we ended up finding. That was just a twist of fate. We even found it. It wasn't even listed. Yeah. And it was just because somebody knew somebody who had this property that used to be for sale, but they the owners found took it off the market. And I'm thinking, the hell? And we ended up finding this. And that's similar to Billy Bob and Miss Kathy, mm -hmm. because there were several people that inquired, serious inquiries yes. about Billy Bob. And for some reason, they just kept falling through, like not coming through or not able to come that weekend or not able to do this. It's true. And so Billy Bob ended up going with Miss Kathy. And he I've seen the videos of their walks, rain or shine, the things that she does with him, <laughs> dressing him up with his little sunglasses, the his vet's visits and whatnot. And Billy Bob, he he won the lottery, if you will. When they sometimes they say that, you know, we won the lottery with this rescue or the whatever. But Billy Bob has won the lottery, y'all, with it. We're going to a lady who a lap dog, who a lady who who has time and wants a lap dog. And and who genuinely cares for him. She sends me vet updates. Like he um he had a little bit of an anxiety flare with a thunderstorm a few weeks ago. And she sent me a picture and said he he had a really rough night and we went to the vet and my vet recommended this and, um, and she, she just handles it and takes care of it and just, is just, she loves him. And I think mm -hmm. that that's a beautiful thing. I do too. Uh, the other thing I love about Miss Kathy is she is the thriftiest shopper I know. And she sends me all of the amazing deals that she gets. And like, it just gives me a little inspiration on the, on the deal front. And, and there are a lot of women who like that. So that I'm just saying that it was just, like, just, Kathy's, Kathy's, I really like Miss Kathy. A lot of folks saying God knew what you needed and he provided. And boy, did he ever. 
So I do want to say something else as far as talking about our rescue dogs and our whatever. I, I almost said fostering or whatever. But listen, uh, there's been a lot of people who have fallen in love with our newest little guy, Brutus. But uh, listen, uh, Brutus is going to require a surgery on a tooth. He's going to require having his, you know, those things that drop. He's going to have to, a couple of masses removed. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I think Cochran that's probably called them masses. Says he, he needs to have a couple of masses we need to look at removing. And so uh, he has heartworms. We showed you that video with all them heartworms, that poor little guy. So we're not at all ready to talk yet about moving on and and parting ways with this little fella until we get a lot of things taken care of because that's one thing that miss kathy has done is continued the vet care mm -hmm. that billy bob needed even though we told her he still has a way to go she was more than happy to continue the treatments that he was going to require and so we can't we can't ask anyone to take on um a rescue who's going who who needs that tooth that tooth has to come out y'all because sad. he can't eat go ahead he can't eat with he can't eat normal dog food and and I didn't realize it like he's thin and when I when we feed in the evenings we literally open everything up on the counter and place it in front of each dog separately and he just laid there and stared at it and I thought it was so sad because I'm like I know he's hungry so I brought him inside so to eat, eat alone thinking like that he was having a little you know anxiety around eating the rat eating with everyone else and he still wouldn't eat it and then I realized as I'm handing him little pieces of things that he's swallowing it whole and not chewing because yeah. of his tooth so we have to you know he has to have a special food um, and we're feeding him alone so that way, you know, he we we can watch and monitor how much he's eating as well. So he needs some pretty special care right now, and uh, we'd like to get him through. That. So we we do have a problem in the fact that we end up falling in love with them. We you know we discover their personalities, and and it's hard to say to part ways with one. So uh, we knew that Billy Bob, as much as we loved him, and we did, and as much as the, the help that we hopefully were able to give him and get him off the street, we knew that he wasn't going to work out here. It and wasn't his best life. It, it no, wasn't safe it wasn't for his him. Best life. And it, it, was, it was dangerous. And I would have never forgiven myself if he would have got trampled by an animal or hurt by one of the bigger dogs, not intentionally, but still, I, he is not a farm dog. No. And that, it, like, one thing we have always said is no matter what the animal is, if their best life is not with us, even if we've given it a good college try, even if we've spent money, even if we've done invested ourselves and our time and our hearts and everything like that, that we promise that we will always do what's best for that specific animal. And that stands today with the dogs that we take in with any single animal here. If, if it becomes to where their best life is not. Well, I mean, even though kittens in there, if yes. those kittens may very well go to, I'm a survivor uh, because or if someone wants to, or if them, someone here wants, yeah. wants three kittens, then by all means, now we're going to have to do our part first yes. and get them, ready to be moved as far as all their vet care and uh, things that they need. But, you know, that goes for a lot of our dogs. Uh, you know, we have Charlie and Echo that would make wonderful dogs to somebody who, I'm sorry to say this, can take Charlie and Echo. Yes. <laughs> that means, so Jamie and I are not trying to be the police here, but we just kind of in our minds, we know that they are a unit. They're, they're together. And that's a, the part that and would we, not be we, good. No, I would hate, I, it would kill me to know that they've been separated. It would, it would really destroy me to think that I'm going to allow Charlie to go off to one home and echo to a different. And there may be people, dog people who've been around dogs who say that's the best thing for them. And that's not, that they'll, I don't care. I, I'm sorry. I'm hard headed enough to think that I watch them play. I watch them, how they do their thing now. I watched so many things and I just could not imagine seeing them broken apart at this point. At this point, if they were still pups, I understand. But now that they're at the age they are now, so they both, uh, especially Echo, has a skin condition that we're working on and trying to get fixed. Uh, Buddy, 
Buddy's another one. Buddy is a dog that could make someone a wonderful home, uh, a, a wonderful pet. I'm sorry, he needs a good home. But Buddy is a runner. Buddy, it, Buddy, his favorite thing to do is take off running across the pasture, 90 miles an hour for no reason. Yeah, he needs no he reason. Needs room to run. And so I think to myself, so I don't know many people that could say, you know what, we have land that Buddy could just run. Because it's the dumbest thing watching Buddy. I mean, I say dumb. It's cute, dumb, but it's still dumb. We'll just walk outside and Buddy on his own will go and then just haul ass. And I think that he wants people to chase him. And everyone's like saying, oh, it's too hot for that, Everybody Buddy. Else is like, it's too hot. We're, we're, we're hot doing it, buddy. And, we ain't going. and Buddy will break it down and he'll look around and he'll like just then he runs. And that's Buddy's game. And so I think to myself, you know what? We'll eventually get Buddy to fatten up. We'll eventually make him into a really beautiful dog. And he would. He's he's house broke. He is a dog, though, that I think I think that he would do really well in not such a large amount of dogs. Like he. Um, yeah, he has. He's kind of like Billy Bob with his anxiety. I was just say, I think that Buddy would do best to be in an only dog home um or, or saw, one other dog someone's seen that video of buddy just running like a like like forrest gump y'all it's like the movie forrest gump where forrest just took off running one day just running buddy just runs yeah. just runs everywhere he did he doesn't walk he's sweet he's not mean and when i say like he would do well in a one dog home it's because of his anxiety he won't he won't eat he's he's very similar to brutus in that aspect of like he's so busy watching everyone else and running and doing his thing that kind of forgets about food. Um, so we have to feed him by himself as well. And if you notice, like when they all crowd around, Buddy Gump, Buddy is in the back of that. And so I, that's why I just kind of think that he would do well in a, either a, another home with an older dog that doesn't, that doesn't have that same like need to be first thing or in a, in an only dog home type of thing. When Jamie started, the ideas of starting helping out with the dog population, the stray dogs there, you know, in the neighborhood. And she worked to, you know, get me on board. And we had that rule one dog a month. And that would give us time to get the vet care and get it rehomed. <laughs> and if lo and behold, we're not sitting here now with looking at nine dogs. And then. Ritzy. Well, Rizzy's not here now, though. Well, I know, but we have 10 dogs. Yeah, but we're sitting here and we have all these dogs. And I'm and I'm kind of like, I remember I had this talk with the vet. I'm like, am I, would I, would you guys consider a sickos? Are we like sickos? And uh, she reminded me, she goes, hey, you know what? There are folks who have less dogs that have to live in poop and live in filth. And, and they don't have this area to move about and they can't be taken care of. And those are, there's people who are sickos who have these little love goggle type things and they can't see that they're loving their animal to death. Um, she goes, but no, she goes, you guys give them places to, you know, activities to do with lots of enrichment. They have room to roam. They all have food to eat. They have resources and vet care. And so I don't want to just keep bringing in more dogs. I don't know at what point is enough enough, but at this point, we're not sitting here saying we got to get rid of some dogs. We got to move some dogs. No, but if, if the perfect home came for one of them, then a million percent. Yes. Yeah. Um, but like I said, but look at us, we keep throwing on, <laughs> we keep tagging on little asterisks, but you must have lots of room if you want to take buddy, but you must take both echo and Charlie if you want those, but you must be. Hey, and so we that's keep <laughs> part of rescue though. That's I don't why, think that's so. What rescue do, have you ever seen the applications on no, I dog haven't. rescues to adopt? It, it is. That's why people I think just go by off of the street or, or, you know, or wherever any like Craigslist or whatever, because to adopt, you have to, very stringent you, rules. Yeah, there's rules, and oh. you have to prove who you are. And some people aren't willing to do that or can't prove those things. Yeah. So, like, I'll make up my mind if I can take care of a dog or not. I'm not, who are you to tell me? Yeah. And, you know, so from, our, from my standpoint, I feel like we're being responsible. Um, every one of them are spayed or neutered. Every one of them are fully vetted and have all of the care and, and are healthy before they ever go to another home or have the op option to go to another home. And if something would ever happen, we're always willing to take them back as well. So, you know, I, yeah. I, 
Isn't that, if you think about it, another blessing of Longhorn Lester's compared to any of the other three properties that we were serious about? Yes. Because none of um, in my mind, I'm thinking about all three of those properties and none of those would have allowed to have dogs. Not like this. Lot, not like this. No. And so this property is just perfectly placed where our shop and everything is right here in the center in the back center, mm -hmm. far enough away from the two neighbors on both sides. Um, and the dogs, for the most part, have no desire to, to wander and roam. And um, we're just so darn blessed. We're not having to put collars on them, you know, for, for perimeter collars. We've and been very blessed with the dogs that, that have come to us. And I've said this before that I think we officially have a pack now, but the foundation of that pack is Millie, Fiona, and Trixie. And those three have set the tone to each expansion does add its own personality to it, but it still stays within that parameter. The Did you just say Millie, Fiona, and Trixie as the pack leaders? No, as the foundation. They were firsties. Oh, the foundation. I was like, whoa, whoa. whoa. And Ritzy. In reality, Ritzy was here, and, and we just made that switch at like dog number five. So Ritzy, so, actually Ritzy was the one that taught Millie and Fiona how to roam. Yeah. So Trix, uh, not Trixie, Trixie has never left, no. but, but uh, Ritzy, yeah, we cannot have Ritzy back here until, cause she's a beagle yeah. and beagles want to find the nearest trail and follow it no matter how far it goes. And they would all go with her. And they would. They would all thought that was the funnest game to follow her nose. <sighs> and uh, she would just take them forever. And we were, it was, that was, a, that was scary for us. So Ritzy is better at I'm a survivor because she can get out and do what she wants to do. And everyone around there are family and there's nowhere she can go because she's not going to follow a rabbit into the neighborhood across the street. She yeah. only follows her nose to the woods you know, behind all the family's houses. So and by the time uh, she gets far enough, she's tired because she's, yeah, she's older. old. But no, we, we, um, we are blessed to have taken on the endeavor of the dogs. And the problem is we start loving them. And when you start loving them, then it's hard to. Let me tell you what, I love Brutus. Holy moly, do I love that dog. He's the male Christmas. Like everything about him is just remarkable he crosses his legs whenever he sits his little front paws he sits like this every time when he's laying down like it's the most endearing thing ever how can you not love him i know yeah a lot of folks keep saying that we need professional training but guys i mean that's true i'm not professionals in anything in life yeah we're not that's not who we are so someone said they would be great dogs with the right training well they're great dogs now there they're great dogs now. So I don't know what kind of great you're looking for, but to me, they're already great. And so, I mean, Lester would be great with some training too. <laughs> wouldn't every man be great <laughs> with some professional training, but guess what? You get what you get. <laughs> so I don't, I'm, I'm not trying to be mean about your comment, uh, but uh, I'm certain that if Cesar Milan was our neighbor next door, we could probably learn lots of stuff, but he's not. And so we do the best that we can do. But I will promise you this, like Jamie said, all of our dogs are very well fed and they get plenty of room to run. And I would think that if I were a dog, I would say, yeah, I want to live there. I want to live there. And so that's kind of how I think about all of our animals. You try to think to yourself, if you were that animal, would is this the best life for you? And as long as it is, then I think I think we're fine. But um I'm getting you've, talked, on a, you've talked a whole lot tonight. We're like over an hour now. Hold on. So believe it or not, and I think that most folks would agree, and I would like to see this in the comments. Do you agree that Jamie talked more than me tonight? Because I found myself with a more of a listening ear. So just tonight, did Jamie out talk Lester? Yes or no? And I'm looking for comments. Um, yeah, well, there you go, Jamie. So as you can see, it appears as though Jamie out talked Hey, now you're saying no. <laughs> it started off in my favor, and all of a sudden something shifted. You know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of like the uh, like in election results. All of a sudden, it's all in this favor. Then something happens, and a, and a new a new 
precinct shows up and everything shifts. Well, your precinct just showed up, Jamie. Let, let's rephrase that. Precinct... I probably talked more than I normally do, but I did not talk more than you. That is the meanest thing y'all could have said to me because after the cat, after the all the cat wars and everything. Oh my gosh! All I can tell you is that it's fine. It'll be fine, and that tomorrow's video is going to be Chef's Kiss. Amazing. Are you shamelessly plugging your video? Hilarious. Yes, I am. I am shamelessly plugging the fact that that there are some funny, outlandish moments in it that will make them laugh. Tomorrow I can't morning. catch it, but someone goes, "You know what? I did notice that Jamie talked more tonight. I wish I could have caught that and That's stuck fine. it up on here. I can own it. It's fine." Uh, well, I will say that I will also have amazing videos <laughs> out tomorrow and the next day and the day after that this and the day really after that good match and the here. day after that. Can I just point that, that out? And the day after that. That the green is just like a perfect alignment, and we did not plan this. And I'm just, it's very cute. See, <laughs> we love you, and we are blessed to have made your acquaintance and to be a part of your life, and that you've made us a part of your life. You take time to watch our videos and put up with our nonsense and our <laughs> our foolery. Our foolery is what my grandma used to call it. And you come back, and we appreciate that more than you realize. And so thank you for that, loving and supporting us. And just giving us the greatest gift of all, your time. That's beautiful. All right. Well, I'm no, it's not a Texas goodbye. No, don't even go there. Here comes our Texas goodbye. No, we're really going to get off the internet now. We're done now. I'm going to take my finger and press in on the I'm going here Facebook, so nobody has to look at my armpit. And you'll do the YouTube. And I'll say goodnight to everybody. Good night, y'all. We love you.